Hello friends, this is Durga again from IIT Varsity. At this time we are talking about uh, schedulers. Uh, so far I have given um, all you about the schedulers. As part of this video, I will try to explain how the FIFO scheduler works. Okay, so still the pro the, uh, the MapReduce program of word count is running on the cluster. You can see it here. So far it has completed uh, approximately 170 tasks. Uh, 15 are still running and 174 are pending. While this is running, uh, we will try to submit another job. Before that, um, let me share the screen in a, uh, quickly and then I will discuss. So now I am sharing the screen. OK, entire screen, share. OK, now let me open Excel spreadsheet. Okay, so we have submitted a job. Let let us get the job ID. So I'm opening another session here. Two fifty four. So in this session, we will try to see what is the job ID by running mapred job list job list command. Mapred job list and you can see this is the job id which is currently running so we can actually paste this job id here let me uh, increase the zoom in a little bit okay so insert job id and then uh, Maps required. Reducers required. Application master. Let us give the total capacity also. Total capacity of the cluster is 16. Okay, and application master, I will cut from here and uh, I will insert here. Mappers required, re reducers required. Mappers pending. Mappers running. So let me zoom out a little bit. Okay, mappers completed okay so and also we need to give the time okay insert time okay it, it started around 9 30 total capacity is 16 application master one total map is required 360 reducers required eight so that is the total capacity required by job. You can see that by refreshing this screen. So here, 80 are pending, 15 are running, 265 complete. Uh, so, but at, when it started, um, one of uh, so out of total capacity 16 one is taken care uh, by uh, means one one is occupied by application master so only 15 will be running and to begin with there will be zero completed and pending will be 360 minus 15 which will be 335 or 345 that is at t uh, 930 and at 936 when when we uh, look at it uh, at this time 937 when no other job is running total capacity is still 16 application mass will be one uh, this these two will be same i'm copy pasting those things and now 63 are pending 15 are still running and 282 are still running so if 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 we use fifo scheduler so right now the sched uh, we are using Cloudera distribution, and it uses phase scheduler. But if we use FIFO scheduler, and let's say we have submitted submitted a job, 
3 at 9.37. Okay. And let's say it requires only 10 mappers and uh, one reducer, not more than that. Total capacity is still 16. But at 9.37, because all the 16 are occupied by job 02, this will not get any application master. This will not get any uh, thing for mappers. And the, the map reduce application will not even start it. So all uh, it will be uh, all the mappers will be in pending state only. Actually, it it it, it will not be even uh, submitted for the uh, for the running purpose. It will be waiting until at least one mapper um, is available um, uh, from from this job. So as long as uh, uh, the uh, the pending is um, uh, the pending is more than the total capacity um, it will be in waiting state so now let us see what uh, it's almost 939 now let us see uh, how many are pending how many are running and how many are completed and then based on that i will fill the spreadsheet okay it is a little bit slower still 38 are pending eight are running and 314 complete okay and now you can see that reducers have started uh, seven are running and one is completed uh, so total um, eight uh, mappers are running and seven mappers uh, seven reducers are running okay so here at uh, 939 okay still we are talking about job job zero two okay and here i will just say pending running and completed okay at 939 um, uh, out of these uh, 360 mappers and eight reducers, uh, still 15 are running. Out of these 15, eight are mappers and seven are reducers. Eight are mappers and seven are reducers. And uh, uh, total 368 are the tasks that needs to be executed to complete this job. Out of this 368, 39 are still pending. So at 939, 39 are still pending and uh, completed are. Uh, out of 368, including mappers and reducers, 314 are completed. Okay. So let me zoom in a little bit. Okay. So, uh, but when it comes to job three, even at 939, it will not get any resources. Still, the job will be in, in pending state. Out of the 11 tasks, uh, which includes 10 mappers plus reducers, everything will be in pending state even at 9.39. Even though some of the tasks are completed um, uh, for job two by between 9.37 and 9.39, still uh, job three does not get any resources to process its data, okay? So that is the behavior of FIFO scheduler. Once the job is submitted, until the uh, uh, the job is completed up to the limit, uh, um, uh, up to the required limit less than the capacity of the cluster. In this case, the capacity of the cluster is 16. Until the number of tasks uh, that needs to be executed for this job is less than 16, this job 03 will not be started. That is the behavior of the FIFO scheduler. What is the drawback? I will cover in a moment. Let's refresh again and see what is going on in the cluster. Then I will discuss the drawbacks. So now the job is completed around 940, let's say, uh, or 941. Okay. Around 941. Out of um, this 368 capacity that is required to complete this job, which include mappers and reducers, let's say pending is uh, uh, pending is reduced to 14. 
rest of the stuff um, is either uh, sorry yeah let's say pending is reduced to 14 and uh, 15 are still running let's say this is at 940 okay 15 are still running which includes maples plus reducers and here um, after three, uh, 29 um, uh, out of um, uh, 368 minus 29 is the completed number so 330, 339 are completed and still this will not get any resources okay immediately after this date when uh, uh, so, uh, so even after this date the pending will be uh, 13 12 11 10 9 etc and uh, as long as uh, the running plus pending of this job is less than the capacity so as long uh, um, as long as um, this uh, uh, the number that is uh, in running state plus pending state for the so jobs that is submitted earlier which is job two in this case is less than the capacity of the cluster this will not get any resources so now let's take the example of 941 okay at 941 let's say um, uh, the pending is zero and running is only 14 okay and rest of the stuff is completed which means 368 minus 14. Almost 354 tasks are completed. At this time, when the required capacity for this job two, which includes pending plus running, is less than the capacity of the cluster. Uh, in this case, running is 14 plus application master one. So there is application master, which is always running for this one. 14 plus one, is 15 and 15 is less than our total capacity at this time this job will change its status to running so here the time is 941 so this is 940 for here 941 and here uh, the total capacity is still 16 for the cluster now application master will be submitted okay but mappers required 10 reducers required one and pending will be still be zero sorry pending will be 11 which is mappers plus reducers that are still pending reducers will be zero and completed will be zero the reason why still we uh, uh, all the 11 will be pending is the first task which will be submitted for a job when we are using the yarn as the uh, map reduce execution framework will be gone to application master okay and then once at around 941 itself as this uh, this running convert to uh, pending sorry uh, this running uh, uh, tasks reduces further uh, there are no more tasks which will convert for this job to from pending state to running state at that time you will start getting the capacity for this one okay so like that it will be changing let's say three completed at the same time at that time uh, now you have uh, you can run four tasks running at the same time so there could be four and then seven will be pending or if some of the tasks are completed there there might be even one completed and then four running and then six pending so whatever pace it takes to complete those tasks, the numbers will be changing rapidly. Okay, so this is how the FIFO scheduler works. Until the earlier jobs uh, have uh, 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 completed thus far, until the required capacity for their pending and running tasks is less than the total capacity of the cluster, the subsequent jobs will never get, uh, uh, will not get any resources to even change the job from submitted state to running state. Um, so that is the caveat with the FIFO scheduler. If you run a very long running job to process terabytes of data, if there are any very important uh, uh, short uh, or small jobs, those small jobs will not even started until that very long running job completed. And it is a big drawback uh, to use 
this kind of framework in the production uh, kind of environments because at times smaller jobs might be much more relevant than uh, long running jobs and they have to be completed in timely manner for that reason we will choose uh, better scheduling tools uh, to handle all the jobs that will be submitted in the cluster simultaneously and, uh, and those schedulers uh, which are better than fifo scheduler uh, which are being used uh, in uh, uh, production clusters are called as fifo scheduler and capacity scheduler which we'll see as part of the next video and uh, uh, again i am emphasizing that fifo scheduler is default in uh, cloudera and uh, uh, sorry phase scheduler is default in cloudera and capacity scheduler is in hortonworks earlier i mentioned it incorrectly that fifo scheduler and capacity scheduler are the ones which are used in production that is not the case fifo scheduler is only for the development purpose people who want to learn map reduce apis and uh, uh, implement some map reduce programs for their practice purposes they use fifo scheduler but even for pocs or any other uh, implementations in enterprise either use phase scheduler or uh, capacity scheduler and phase scheduler is default in cloudera distributions and capacity scheduler is default in um, hortonworks distributions and i'm not sure about the other distributions but most of the distributions use either phase scheduler or capacity scheduler and we will see those things as part of the subsequent videos that being said if you like this video please click on the like button if you want to provide the feedback please use the comment section of the video if you want to discuss further about certifications or big data please join my linkedin groups called itversity hyphen certifications or itversity hyphen big data and also if you are not aware about my uh, recent uh, 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 recent launch of my website www.itversity.com please visit this website and uh, uh, especially for uh, uh, development courses i will try to come up with uh, many courses uh, on this website so uh, please uh, visit and uh, uh, provide me the feedback so that i can make it better here it is very slow let me open it in uh, another browser safari because i'm using foxy proxy in uh, firefox it is slow now it will be better in safari so this is the website so you can visit this website and provide me the feedback and also if you like the content on the channel you can click on this page and start donating uh, uh, for my efforts or you can also uh, take care of fan funding in youtube channel uh, whatever is uh, uh, relevant to you that being said thank you bye bye